Independence Square, but the original name is Black Star Square. Now, Black Star Square was chosen uh, because of the uh, the great man Marcus Gavi Black Star Line, and Black Star became the Ludo Star of Africa Freedom. If you take a look at African, all the African countries' flag. You will see red, you will see black, you will see green, you will see um, gold. gold. So these are some of the colors that were selected for the flags. In Ghana, that is what we have. Now on top of it, you can see the black star visibly displayed over there. Underneath is freedom and justice, and that is the motto of Ghana. Freedom and Justice. Uh, and then we have uh, 1957. Uh, that was the date we had independence. Now, coming up on your right is the Independence Square. And this is where we celebrate our independence anniversary and other anniversaries. It will interest you to know that this is where the country hosted uh, President Bill Clinton when he first came to Ghana and he was the life certain president that ever visited Ghana. The rest of them when they are no more on the seat then they visit Ghana. Yeah. Down straight ahead down there where the Black Star Square is written it's a senator and we'll go round once again for you to see when you take a critical look at it, it looks like um, or the name, the nickname that was given to it is Fatia's handbag. Fatia handbag. Fatia was the wife of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the one we saw the grave. And on such occasion, he has a special bag that looks like us. So the architect looked at it and designed the same thing, hence the name Fatia's handbag. And that is where the presidents and other dignitaries sit during functions. It is also the second largest square. The first one is the Tenement Square of China. And this is the second largest square. Can you tell us? Why was it named Black Star Square again? Black Star Square because of the great man Marcus Gavi Black Star Line. Same name on his shirt, family. That we selected, that was selected or was chosen Come on. to become the Lodo Star of African Freedom. So most of the African countries, you will see black, red, green, and gold. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Freedom and justice. And this is the Black Star Stadium. <laughs> so what do we call this, the Black Star Stadium? Oh, that's one. Um, I'm renaming it. Ah, you are renaming it. It's okay. okay. <laughs> so put it into writing yeah. and I will submit it. Submit it, please submit yes. it. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just straight ahead of us is the uh, Accra Sports Stadium. Accra Sports Stadium. It was formerly named after the Minister of Sports. Mm. He did so well, Dr. Ohinijan. So it was known as Ohinijan Stadium. Or Accra Sports Stadium. We have one in Kumasi, one in, uh, uh, that is Ashanti region, we have one in the northern part of Ghana, and then we have one in the western region as well. Perfect. So Apart from that, we have other stadiums also. So perfect, we should rename all of them Black Star Stadium, Kumasi, Black Star Stadium, Accra, and so on. Ashe. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, but put it into writing. <laughs> Submit it for Thank you. Submit it <laughs> <laughs> through Parliament for vetting. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, someone has a question, Fabian? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, 28 February is a very symbolic thing. On the 28th February, 
something happened in Ghana or in the Gold Coast. And I was going to talk about it, but so far as you mentioned, now take a look on your right. There's a small, this white thing over here. And in the, there is a monument coming up on your right. The monument is coming up on your right. And then you can see National Park. Now, after the National Park, down there, you can see three ah. uh, statues. That far thing over there. What happened was that on the 28th of February, there were veteran soldiers who marched to then the castle. There is a castle here, Usu Christambo Castle. Okay. They went there because during the Second World War, the British took a lot of soldiers from Ghana to go and fight for them. Mm -hmm. And before they went, they were promised by the British governor, including the Queen, that when they come back, they're going to butter their life, they're going to do this for you, they're going to do this for you, a whole lot. So they also fought with strength. And then at the end of the war, those who are alive, when they came back, those promises were not coming. So they decided to write a lot of letters which yielded no fruits. So finally they decided to march to the castle to see the governor himself a handover. When they got to that junction, there was a British commander called Major Imprim. Imprim told them that they should go back to the barracks, but he would convey the message to the queen. And they said, we don't need you. We want to talk to the governor. Persistence, they said no, they won't go. So he collected a weapon from the guard and shot through the crowd. When he shot through the crowd, three soldiers died instantly. And that sparked off the revolution. That sparked off a lot of, uh, um, let me say, energy for us to push hard to get independence. And became like a wildfire that spread across the whole country burning of European goods, destroying European houses, yeah, yeah. and a whole lot became the order of the day. Mm -hmm. So finally, yeah. uh, Queen of England set a committee to go and then investigate. When they investigated, they said, oh, well, the people need uh, 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 independence. Why can't you oh, give right. them? Exactly. So that was the beginning of our gaining independence on the 28th of February. Okay. Thank you.